Wolverine, aka Weapon X, aka James Howlett, aka Logan, no matter what name you know this mutant knuckle head by, there's no changing the fact that he is the very best at what he does, and what he does isn't very nice. So before we get to see Hugh Jackman take what might very well be his final turn as the Wolverine on the big screen, I thought it would be fun if we all hunkered down and took a closer look at the essential stories for Wolverine. I'm Cape Jewel, and this is an adamantium-laced edition of Required Reading. Reading. Now, as with any superhero, if it's a better understanding you're seeking, then there's no better place to begin than with the character's first appearance, and for Wolverine, that came in Hulk number 181 from November 1974. Yes, that's right, the most well-known X-Men didn't even first appear in an X-Men book. You see, while on an adventure in Canada, the Hulk gets into a giant brawl with the Wendigo, so big in fact Wolverine's masters, more on them in a minute, send in him to deal with the threat. First Wolverine and Hulk fight, then they team up, then they fight again. These two spend a lot of their publication history fighting each other. In fact, they say the Hulk is strongest there is, and for Wolverine, his first ever appearance shows him being able to go blow for blow with the Jade Giant. And you know what? That sent one hell of a message. Now, it was in 1975 Wolverine would be recruited to join the X-Men, but believe it or not, the Merry Mutants were not doing so hot in this era. Logan often found himself being overshadowed by other more popular members of the team. It wasn't really until John Byrne, a fellow Canadian much like Wolverine himself, took over the book, and we actually got to see some more movement for the character. And while we fans could argue day and night about when exactly Wolverine took center stage and broke out as a headlining mutant, most comic historians believe it was in the pages of X-Men number 132 in a story entitled Wolverine Alone from 1980. The story goes, during a battle with the evil aristocrats known as the Hellfire Club, the X-Men are taken hostage and Wolverine is seemingly killed. Of course, as we all know, Logan is almost impossible to kill, and this issue is pretty much Wolverine going full-on Rambo, cutting his way through inc incredible odds all to save his team. And he is most certainly not gentle about it either. The comic does not shy away from showing Wolverine is killing these poor mooks and that he is very good at it. In fact, he might be the best at what he does, and what he does is, well, you know, not very nice in every sense of the word. It was a true star-making moment and ever since then, fans were absolutely enraptured with this guy. Now, after becoming such a smash hit in the pages of a teen book like X-Men, it was only a matter of time before Wolverine got his own solo miniseries, and that book came in 1982. The story was called Simply Wolverine, a four-part tale that finds Wolverine traveling to Japan and getting sucked into a web of lies, love, violence, and the Yakuza, just for good measure. We get to see a very different side of Wolverine in this story. Chris Claremont and Frank Miller will make choices in this book that will influence the hero for years to come. Why we even get treated to the first of what will be many, many tragically failed love interests in the form of Mariko Yoshida. Another thing this book does is hit home the idea that Wolverine truly considers himself a samurai, a warrior with a code of honor, and also one who's not afraid to spill blood when the situation calls for it. Now, if this story sounds familiar to you, that's no doubt because this book served as the basis for the 2013 The Wolf. Wolverine movie. What other comic books inspired the movie? Well, keep watching this video and I'll happily tell you all about them. Now, so far we've seen Wolverine as a superhero, a fighter, a lover, but what about Wolverine as a friend and mentor? Well, look no further than Kitty Pride and Wolverine from 1984. And don't get it twisted, Wolverine might not have top billing, but I assure you this book marks a major turning point for him as a character. Spinning out of the pages of Chris Claremont's massively popular Uncanny X men run, the story picks up not long after Kitty breaks up with her boyfriend, the Russian Colossus. She follows her father to Japan on a business trip, only to be captured by the Yakuza and the evil ninja Ogun. A brainwashed Kitty is then sent to kill Wolverine next, and the two teammates are forced to battle one another. This story started a long and beloved trend of Logan taking young female characters under his wing and forming a supportive, almost older brother type of role, a trend that is clearly alive and well in 
the new Logan movie. This helps to further humanize and sympathize Wolverine while also helping Kitty come into her own as an X-Men. In fact, it's this story that she first takes up the codename Shadowcat. Taking place in Japan, this is yet another story that further strengthens Wolverine's strange and almost bittersweet connection to the land of the rising sun, something that would follow him pretty much through the rest of his publication history. Moving on from lifelong friends, we come to Wolverine's greatest and most recurring foe, Sabretooth, aka Victor Creed, and the story that started it all was 1989's Wolverine Volume 2, Issue Number 10. Now, did you know before devoting his life to trying to kill Logan, Sabretooth was actually an Iron Fist villain? Yeah, it's true. In this story, Wolverine flashes back to his early days in Canada and the brutal killing of the then love of his life, Silver Fox, at the hands of Sabretooth. This leads to a knockdown, drag out fight between the two men, in which Wolverine actually ends up losing and losing pretty hard, too. These events would set into motion a blood feud that would define the two men for lifetimes to come, especially as both mutants are gifted with healing factors that keep them and their mutual hate for each other alive and kicking. There's also a current day storyline wherein Wolverine, under the guise of Patch, his gangland persona, deals with crime in Madripoor, helped out by none other than Jessica Drew, the Spider Woman. As the story comes to a head, Logan begins to realize that his past and present have way more in common than he cares to admit. As Sabretooth once again makes his presence and ill intent known, 24 Hours is a rough, uncompromising, brutal story that helped kickstart one of the greatest rivalries in all of superhero fiction. And that's why even all these years later, it's still very much required reading. Now, for the longest time, one of the most endearing or most maddening, depending on who you talk to, aspects of Wolverine as a character was the mystery that shrouded his own personal history. It was murky at best and hard to follow at worst. It seems fans were always asking the same questions. Where did he come from? Is Logan his real name? Where did he get his amazing claws? In fact, for long stretches, not even Wolverine himself knew the answer to these questions. That all changed with the story Weapon X from Marvel Comics Presents number 72 from 1991. This series of short anthology tales tells us a story that by now I'm sure most people know by heart. An aimless mutant named Logan, gifted with amazing powers to heal, is kidnapped by the group known as Weapon X. And under the orders of the mad scientist Dr. Cornelius is put through a hellish procedure that grafts the super metal adamantium to his skeleton. All with plans of making Logan into the ultimate killing machine. The project works too well in fact. Logan eventually becomes too wild to control before eventually turning on his handlers and escaping Weapon X. The group would however bedevil Wolverine for pretty much the rest of his career and the horrible memories of what happened to him there and the PTSD that he carried around with him would go on to define the hero for years to come. This wouldn't be the first or last time, however, comic writers tried to put their own personal definitive stamp on Logan's origin story, but to this day, Weapon X remains one of the most well-beloved amongst fans and probably one of the most referenced. And honestly, I can see why. Even to this day, a lot of the images associated with this story are prime vintage Wolverine for a reason. Heading into the modern era now, we have Mark Millar's 2006 epic Enemy of the State. As is often the case for poor Wolverine, his past in Japan comes a calling again when the nephew of his deceased fiance gets kidnapped and ransomed for a million American dollars. Wolverine gets called in to take the boy back, only to discover that this is part of a much bigger plot perpetrated by some of his oldest foes, including the demonic ninja clan known as the Hand, the Nazi death cult known as Hydra, and an evil mutant group called the Dawn of the White Light. They all want to capture Wolverine so they can brainwash him into becoming their perfect agent of death and destruction. Wolverine would end up turning on his closest friends in the superhero community, and former hand assassin turned hero Elektra, as well as super spy agency S.H.I.E.L.D. would be dispatched to try and stop him before he could pull off his ultimate plan of using Cerebro to kill the President of the United States. Enemy of the State is a wonderfully gonzo, action-packed thrill ride that puts the very best of Hollywood action movies into the very best of Marvel comics. The fights are all brutal, helped out a ton by John Romita Jr.'s unique art style, and the arc features a ton of awesome cameos from other heroes, easily making this feel like one of the biggest Wolverine stories ever told. What's my takeaway from the whole thing? Well, Wolverine can do pretty much damn near anything he puts his mind to, so it's a good thing he's on the side of the angels. And with that, we finally come to the comic that inspired the new movie hitting theaters soon, and 
by extension this video. The book I'm talking about is of course Old Man Logan, also from Mark Millar. This 2008 Elseworlds story tells the tale of a far-flung future wherein almost all the heroes are dead and Wolverine lives a quiet, almost Clint Eastwood-esque in unforgiven existence out in the wasteland. But when a blind Avenger, Clint Barton Hawkeye, comes to the former Wolverine for help, this beaten down mutant will need to embark on a cross-country road trip through the destroyed remains of what was once his world. All the while battling personal demons and swearing to never pop his claws again. Why you might be asking yourself? Well, because as we discover, it was Wolverine who actually killed the X-Men, all while under the control of a supervillain. Old Man Logan is a bleak, almost oppressive story about trying to save a world that's already been wrecked beyond repair, and yet at the same time it's also a testament to Wolverine's warrior spirit and his refusal to stay down for long. Only time will tell how much of this modern comic classic actually made it into the new movie, but I feel pretty damn good it's gonna be really satisfying either way. And uh, oh hey, if you end up really liking this book and want to see more adventures of Old Man Logan, well guess what, you're in luck. At the end of Secret Wars, this version of Wolverine ended up crossing over into the main universe and he's been the Wolverine we've been dealing with for the last couple years. This book from Jeff Lemire is also really solid and is a nice little companion piece to the original Old Man Logan as it fills in a lot of blanks. Now as I mentioned previously, Wolverine has had one of the most complicated histories of almost any comic book character I can name. His early years have always been a spreadsheet nightmare of retcons and false memories, but that all changed in 2001 when Bill Jemis gave us a book simply called Origin. This book gives us a chance to see Wolverine as a child, real name James Howlett, a sickly kid born to a wealthy family in 19th century Canada. We also learn the complicated situation involving his parentage. Maybe his father was the man who took care of him, but maybe it was also the cruel, drunken, possibly mutant groundskeeper by the name of, get this, Thomas Logan. Tragedy soon strikes the young Wolverine and his family, but it's after this, his supposed father's death, that our hero manifests his powers for the very first time, complete with bone claws. Yes, that's right, this was the story that gave us bone claws. It's after that, James and his lifelong friend and original red-headed crush Rose go on the run across Canada. We really do get a front row seat to watch our hero grow and mature into the character we all know and love today. Why he even earns the name Wolverine throughout the course of the story while working in a quarry. But as is so often the case, violence and betrayal follows Logan everywhere he goes and he's eventually forced to come to blows with Dog, another former friend who might very well be his own half-brother. But surprisingly not Sabretooth, even though they totally look alike. Go figure, that's a, that's a whole big thing unto itself. Origins really was the story that fans had been waiting so many years for, and one that paid homage to the hero's rich history, while also not being afraid to do their own thing. And while this comic served as the basis for the Wolverine Origins movie, I sure won't hold that against it. And lastly, we come to the end of the line for Wolverine, by which I mean totally literally, because I'm talking about the Death of Wolverine story from 2014, the last canon appearance of Wolverine for what's been about, jeez, three years now? You see, it was around this time in the comics Wolverine contracted a virus from the microverse that ended up shutting down his amazing healing factor. This meant that writer Charles Souls had to undertake the monumental task of trying to kill a hero who spent the majority of his publication years being unkillable. A good chunk of this story is just Wolverine coming to terms with his own demise and facing mortality for the first time ever. He goes to all manner of doctors and scientists, even the likes of Reed Richards only to find out there really is no hope for him. Furthermore, no healing factor means that if he tries to pop his trademark claws, he might just die of infection that much sooner. Literally in this five-part story, Wolverine's entire body turns against him. And as you might have guessed, when word starts getting around about our hero's impending doom, Wolverine's greatest foes from the entirety of his career come out of the woodwork to try and kill him before his sickness can do its job. This is a globe-trotting epic that sees Wolverine visit visit some of his most important places from his life. In fact, this story makes a ton of direct references to comics I have previously mentioned in this video. We get a trip to Madripoor with Patch, a fight with Sabretooth, a fight with a possessed Kitty Pride. all of which eventually culminates in coming face to face with the mad scientist who created him for Weapon X all those years ago. This comic also has to have easily one of the best final panels I have ever seen, wherein Wolverine wonders aloud to himself if it's all been worth it, and if you're watching this video, I don't think I need to tell you the answer to that, because you just know. All in all, Death of Wolverine is a great end for a great comic character that
that managed to be so much more than just another gimmick death in superhero works. And there you have it, everybody, a whopping 10 required Wolverine comics, and you know what? I bet I could easily have mentioned 10 more. I hope these get you started, and I'm more than certain I will need to revisit Logan again for a required reading volume too. Until then, everyone, I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned a little something new, and in the comment section down below, be sure to tell me what your favorite Wolverine stories are and what character or team you would like to see me do next in required reading. Furthermore, if you want to pick up any of the books I mentioned, you absolutely can. Just click that book depository link down there in the description of this video. You'll be helping me out. You'll be helping yourself out to a great story. Everybody wins. Until next time, everybody. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it. And while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer? Or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.